All right, so now let's talk about repeated games, Finite or Infinite Horizon. I'm going to give the description for both. So what is a repeated game? Uh, the initial ingredient is what we call stage game. Stage game is actually any strategic form game. All right, so G with set of players and set of actions for each player and the set of payoffs, we assume that the strategic form game has a compact set of strategies or actions for each player and continuous payoff function. Uh, well, if the strategic form game is finite, these two definitions will be uh, satisfied automatically. Alternatively, if the game is not finite, meaning there are more than, uh, I'm sorry, there, there are infinitely many available actions, well, then we want the set of actions to be compact and the payoff functions to be continuous. All right, so a repeated game denoted by G superscript T, and don't forget, T can be finite, can be infinite. Don't forget, infinity is not a number, it's just a concept. And so the idea is basically the following. The stage game, G, is going to be repeated at each discrete time period. T equals zero, they're going to simultaneously choose their actions from AI, and then uh, they are going to learn their actions. In period one, they're going to get together, they're going to choose simultaneously and independently, again, their actions from AI, and then the payoffs will be realized, learn each other's actions. And then they're going to play another time, a period uh, t equals two, t equals three, up to t equals capital T. As I said, if t is equal to infinite, that means there is no end to this game. All right, one thing is that uh, what does it mean a game not ending at all? Well, there are different interpretations. One, you can say the game is going to end with some probability p, which is a number between 0 and 1. So, all right, so this is the ending probability and will continue, oops, continue with probability 1 minus p. So if this is the case, that means, well, what, what does that mean? That means in, in uh, time t equals 0, they play the game and then randomly somebody determines whether the game will move to the next period or not. And so players observe if it doesn't move to the next period, well, the, that's the end of the game. They just receive their payoffs and leave. And, and if, if the game continues to the next period, uh, once again, they come together, play their actions uh, or choose their actions from their sets. And then uh, again, somebody outside of this game, meaning outside of the set of players, determine whether the game is going to move to the next period or not uh, with the same probability. So you can interpret it this way. So what does that mean? That means with some positive probability, uh, the game is actually going to keep continue and the th well, with probability p. And the thing is obviously the probability that the game will last forever is approaching to zero, but nevertheless, for any uh, sort of uh, finite time period you think of, there's some positive probability that the game is going to last that long. The only thing is that the players do not know when the game exactly is going to finish. Well, why is that so? Well, if the, if the players know when the game is going to end, they actually do uh, sort of backward, in, they can do backward induction. Well, I'm going to play in the last stage this. So given that, how should I play in a, a round before that, a before that, a before that, and then at the beginning of the game, right? They can do the backward induction. But when they don't know the, when the players don't know the end of the game, they can't really do the backward induction. Second of all, when we do experiments, for example, there is what we call uh, the, 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 the final stage uh, phenomena. Uh, actually, if players know that the, it is the end of the game, well, they, they change their strategies. They, they act differently. All right. So it is an important, I mean, it's, it's as if whether you know when exactly you're going to die or not, right? I mean, if you know when exactly you're going to die, you, I mean, probably we all going to live our lives uh, differently. Uh, so a history in this environment is relatively easier uh, because, you know, the same game will be repeated again and again and again. So a history we denote it by H of T, which is a history with length T, is a sequence of action profiles, all right? So action profiles at each period. So A0 is the action, pro A0 is a null history, okay? A1 is the 
action profile taken by each player at time uh, t equals uh, I mean, k equals one. A, 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 a2 is an action profile, all right? So A2 is like uh, player one's action in uh, second uh, period, player two's action in second period, and player n's action in second period, all right? So these are all vectors. And well, the history is basically length t has a summing up all the actions played up until point t minus one. I mean, period t minus one, uh, which is the last period we played, and we all observe the history. That's the assumption. So in this game, in the finite or infinite horizon repeated games, there is simultaneity because in the strategic form game, players choose their actions simultaneously. However, after each period, everybody observes the history perfectly, okay? Nevertheless, this is a game with imperfect information. So this is a history of length t, t, t and what we can define, we can define h superscript h uh, uh, superscript t, uh, which basically means the set of histories of length t, so all the histories of length t, and then when you take the union of t from, uh, well, zero to capital T, which again could be infinite, it basically means or gives us the set of histories. So if the game is a finite game, well then h of capital T is, oops, h of capital H of uh, capital T is the set of uh, terminal histories, terminal histories and when the game has infinite horizon well then all infinite histories are terminal because remember there is no end to the game but nevertheless we define terminal history in an infinite horizon game as being the history that has infinite length all right well meaning if ht or h is an infinite history, well then there is no action profile A where H comma A is another history, all right? So if, if this is the case, well then H is not an infinite history, okay? Uh, so if you remember our definitions of, definition of uh, ex extensive form games, uh, we defined infinite, or, uh, uh, infinite histories uh, exactly in this way. Well, then what is a pure strategy? So pure strategy is basically the following. Uh, every player observes the history. I mean, what happened in period zero, period one, period two, etc., all the way up to period uh, T minus one and, and T minus one included. And then what action I'm going to choose, all right? Uh, so therefore a strategy is mapping for every player, mapping each history to an action. That's it. It's very, very simple. What about a mixed strategy? Well, this is in fact a behavioral strategy. Um, so a mixed strategy, well, we call it mixed strategy in this setup. A mixed strategy maps each history, finite or not, doesn't matter. Uh, each history, well, well, I'm sorry, all the infinite histories are terminal, so therefore for all finite histories, it maps each history to a probability distribution over actions. All right, that's it. Well, what about the payoffs? Well, obviously, if players are playing a mixed strategy, they're going to take an ex uh, they're going to calculate their expected utilities. But what matters is basically how they are going to. Uh, I mean, what payoff they're going to get if they uh, sort of if the sequence of action profiles is something like this. All right, so let's say A is the sequence of action profile, which is terminal. Once again, if T is finite, this is what terminal history will look like. All right, if it is, uh, if T is infinite, well, remember, so A of T uh, doesn't exist because the game will continue forever. So this is a, a a action profile, a sequence of action profiles. Well, what is the payoff player I is going to get if they played a zero at the first stage, uh, a one at the uh, second stage or period one, period zero, period one, period two? Well, the payoff is simple. Uh, well, I, I just look at my payoff, UI, AT, AT is a profile of strategies or actions, remember. So I look at my payoff, but the thing is, 
I discount it because time matters for me. I mean, whether I receive $10 or 10 payoffs today versus 10 payoffs, 10 units of payoffs in 100 periods later uh, is, are, are two different things from today's perspective. So therefore, I discount my payoff and I'm going to multiply it with delta to the power t. We assume for simplicity that each player has the same discount factor delta. Well, we don't have to assume that, obviously. You can assume that it is delta to the power i. Once again, if the game has infinite horizon, t is going to be infinite. Well, we normally and usually look at average payoff. What does that mean? That means we basically multiply this thing with 1 minus delta. Well, why? Well, the average is standard, right? Average of two numbers is just you add them up divided by the number of, you know, two and then a number of things you add edit. So which is two. If you're averaging three things, you know, you add them up and then divide by three. Well, here, the thing is, if you have infinitely many uh, stages, periods, you can't divide it by infinite, right? Or this is the one reason uh, why we're not dividing it by t. Uh, I'm sorry, a number of histories. I'm sorry, the number of uh, uh, periods. And the second thing, well, not each period are not exactly the same, right? We are discounting them with delta. So what is the idea behind the average path? Well, simple. If these guys are playing some, uh, you know, strategic game, for example, Prisoner's Dilemma, 2203-3011, all right? So uh, they're going to play some uh, it's sort of, let's say, infinite horizon. They play this for infinitely uh, many times or indefinitely, uh, indefinitely, I'm sorry. And so what happens is like, uh, given the realized sequence of action profiles, they're going to calculate their payoffs. But the, well, this number is going to be very, very big. It's going to be finite, but it's going to be very, very big. Well, the thing is, my question or our question is, well, what would be um, per period payoff that corresponds to this sum? Meaning, what payoff? Uh, let's say each payoff player receives, I'm sorry, each period player receives the same payoff, which is X. All right, well, what X corresponds to this payoff? That's the idea. So if you receive the same payoff every period, well, in period zero, this is your payoff. In period one, this is your payoff. In period two, this is your payoff. In period three, this, right? The discounted payoff all the way up to infinity. Well, if you add sum this up, so it's X parentheses, one plus delta plus delta squared plus delta cube. It's basically one divided by one minus delta. So what does that X equals to? Remember, the total payoff is going to be sum from T equals zero to infinity, delta to the power T, UI, A of T. So basically, X is nothing but this payoff times one minus delta. So that is the idea of average payoff. Why do we care about average payoff? Well, because if we calculate the average payoff, it basically, uh, I mean, it, it gives us the opportunity to relate the payoff uh, in, in, uh, with the same units of the uh, simultaneous move or, or, or sort of the stage game, right? For example, if this is the game here, the players can get at most three. So therefore, this number, whatever it is, for example, cannot be four because in no part of this game, in no period of this game, a player can achieve a payoff four or five or something else. So therefore, it is going to be something less than three and definitely greater than zero. So the average payoff uh, gives us a tool to compare the game payoff with the average uh, or sort of the uh, stage game payoff.